Welcome to Namaste Today, the most loving way to begin your day. I'm your heartfelt host and the sensei to serious joy, Christopher Witecki. This audio broadcast is for Wednesday, April 25th, 2017. Happy Lightcast Day. Namaste. I predict today to be a peaceful and serene day. Today is the new moon and that's what I call Lightcast Day. Today, your heart and your energy is casting out your intentions into the universe. And today, I argue you are planting some really radical, magical seeds. In today's Zodiac weather, I'll talk about the new moon and the aftermath throughout the day. And then later in our tea time, I'm looking at Mercury conjuncting Uranus, and I'm realizing the universe has a message for us. It's to take it higher. But first, let's take a look at today's moods and your zodiac weather. This zodiac weather is for Wednesday, April 26, 2017. And my prediction for Planet Gaia today is sunny and balancing today. Step 6 rules the day. We're coming off of a powerfully quiet new moon, and the moon carries up through Taurus to finish the job. Let's take a look at the planets. Happy Lightcast Day to you, my friend. Today is the new moon, the most powerful time of the month for us to manifest our intentions. Today is ruled by Step 6. Step 6 is our capacity to receive. It is Libra. It is balance. And so in this Taurus new moon, the universe is actually giving us more fertility. It's kind of like if you had a genie in a lamp and your first wish was for three more wishes. That's kind of the super new moon that's happening today. And as the day carries out, so will the magic and the spells. So as we open up this early morning, that step six is the new moon. That's a new day. You're most likely feeling very open to a lot of things. That openness is actually the key to your future success. And the goal of today is to remain open. So as the moon climbs through the degrees past step six onto step seven and step eight and step nine, your job or mission, should you choose to accept it, is to continue to open up. Open up to new opportunities, open up to new ideas, just remain open. You're not being asked to select anything, you're not being asked to decide or commit to anything, the universe is just asking you to open particularly to your higher self, because as the sun sets this evening, we will shift into step seven. Step seven is I sense, our psychic awareness, and our spiritual self. And so if you remain open all day, you will open up to your highest spiritual truth tonight, which I think is very important and part of this whole equation. In this new moon, we have Venus, which is the planet of opening, at step 29 Pisces. That is the highest degree of Pisces that we have, and Pisces is the spiritually highest vibration in human incarnation. So we are opening up literally to the highest highs. Now don't worry, just because you are opening up to a higher high or the highest highs doesn't mean you're going to select these different degrees. In fact, the point today is to open and to set a Taurus season of fertility based on openness. And if you don't know, you must be open to receive. Now that said, even though we're being called to open today, there's another energy that's calling for you to shut down. And that is Old Black Lilith. Old Black Lilith has now progressed to step eight Sagittarius. And that means a couple of things. On the one hand, it means you may be facing irrational fears that has to do with making the wrong decision. So you may be having fears about making the wrong choice, or you may be afraid that you have to make a decision, and if you don't, something bad will happen. So fears around decision, and of course, we're worried mostly about decisions that lead down the wrong path, which is what Sagittarius is about, the story we end up living. And so with Black Loth at step eight, expect some fears to come up around decision-making or poor leadership. Now, the other side of interpreting this is actually a bit more fundamental, and that is once you do face these certain fears, you will likely decide, step eight, that you are done with those fears and done for good. 
And so as we open up to a new reality, you'll likely be shutting down to old fears and an old story that you absolutely do not want. So it's absolutely okay on this purebred, light cast new moon to be very clear that you want to remain open, but also very clear about how you want to have things not happening and not manifesting in your life at the very same time. And let us not forget the Mercury retrograde aspect of our reality right now, that you should be open to thinking new ways. In fact, there's a couple of clues for that. On the one hand, Mars is at step three Gemini. That literally means our ego energy is pushing us to open our minds, Gemini, to expand our thinking, Gemini. And we likely have little patience in ourself to think differently. The only problem is we're not too sure how to think. Then let's also point out that Mercury is retrograde on Uranus, which literally means it's time to think differently. In fact, I believe Mercury and Uranus is a big part of today, and that leads us really to our tea time. So go steep yourself some tea, and let's have our daily tea time. Hello, my friend, and welcome to our tea time. Today's tea time topic is take it higher. Now, I talked deeply in yesterday's Namaste today about the seeds of peace. I believe that what we are doing right now are planting very powerful seeds of our ability to manifest in fertility and to do that in a peaceful and balanced way. Once you have planted those seeds, Sensei says it's time to take it higher. Now, if you're wondering where I'm getting all this, I'm actually getting it from Mercury conjoining Uranus. Mercury is retrograde, as you well know, and today Mercury's at step 26. Two and a six adds to an eight, which means that Mercury is causing us to reconsider a direction or a decision. It's probably a direction about our character or our life because it is retrograde in Aries. And so we are re-questioning a direction of our character. Now, at the same time, Uranus is conjoining Mercury today at step 25. 2 plus 5 makes 7, which means Uranus' agenda is to bring the spirit 7 into the equation And that tells us that because Uranus is in Aries, it's our ego that is growing spiritually. So we know that we're reconsidering a direction and we know our ego is growing spiritually. Now, what's interesting is is that Mercury and Uranus do this little dance during the retrograde between now and May 11th. Between now and May 11th, I think you will be completely rethinking how high your character can or will go. What happens on May 11th is Mercury will be direct again and will cross Uranus for the second time. So it's about to cross Uranus now in the retrograde and go to step 25 and then step 24. And then on May 11th, it will be back and direct and it will rejoin Uranus. And by the time it does, Uranus will be at step 26. So on May 11th, even though we're still in the shadow period, This will be the last Mercury-Uranus conjunction of the year, and it's at step 26, which adds to an 8, which is I decide. So the point here is I believe that you will be reconsidering your spiritual direction, your ego's potential, and where you're going between now and May 11th. It's all part of this Mercury-Uranus dance. Now, in practical terms, I've had a lot of people who have commented on Facebook or posted or told me directly in readings that they feel, quote, lost, that they don't feel like they know where they're going. They don't feel like they know who they are anymore. They don't feel like they know what they know what to do next. And believe me, I think this is the conjunction of Mercury and Uranus. We are all literally still baffled and confused, and we're still questioning our character and our direction. And you may wonder, why are we confused about character? We just spent 30 days and a Venus retrograde growing up in Aries. And you're absolutely right, but looking at this, I actually think there's three parts to this year's Aries story. This year's Aries story is super intense. 
In the first part of the story, when Venus first went retrograde, I think the human population was being called to overcome some ancient ego issues, victim issues, all of our issues of ego that really are part of our, quote, karma. And so I think the first part of this airy cycle was we had to kind of scrape off our karma and turn our back to it. Then in the second part, or the second chapter of this airy story, we've had to get stronger. We've had to become functional. We've had to build a new character that's free of all this karma and free of the issues and just keep from sabotaging ourselves. And now I think we're in the third and final chapter of this whole Sun and Aries transit, which is it's now time to take it higher. So the reason why we may feel lost right now is not because we've done anything wrong or headed down the wrong path or it's not because what we have done doesn't count. It all does. It's actually probably because we don't understand the term higher. Up until now with our ego development, the term higher has meant like less dysfunctional, us being healthier, Basically, us being above the conditions we were born to, us feeling stronger or better or faster, all those kind of typical airy airy superlatives, right? But the problem with thinking this of idea as higher is your idea of higher is always based on what was lower. So we're basing our definition of higher on the lowness we have lived. Now, since Mercury is dancing with Uranus... I believe that we're not only going to take it higher, but we're going to reinvent the term higher. We're going to redefine what innovation means. The very definition of higher will be rewritten. And so in other words, higher is a relative term based on the system you are living in. Uranus is always about not just a shift up, but an entire dimensional shift up. It's not that the universe is asking you to get higher in the same room that you've been in. It's that the universe is suggesting you get in a helicopter and leave. To illustrate my point, I'm going to use the game of tennis. We're all familiar with tennis, and I think in many ways that's what cycles are like, the game of tennis. There's this boundary, and it's back and forth and back and forth, right? Going back and forth. We're all over the court. And up until now, all we've been doing in our life is hitting this ball back and forth, which is kind of like based on our karma. And we've tried to be, quote, higher or better by getting better at our swing or improving our footwork or learning our opponent and coming up with strategy. And after all this expertise, after all this uh, playing of tennis and getting better and better and better, I think Mercury conjuncting Uranus means the next time you have that tennis ball fly over the court, you should knock that furry green bastard over the fence and out of the game entirely. That's what I think Mercury and Uranus means, that we've got to knock this ball out of the park. And it doesn't matter if the crowds are going to gasp or your opponent throws his racket down like John McEnroe. What Uranus, I think, is saying is the time has come not to be better at your current game, but to opt out and find a higher game. And I think this is why everyone is feeling lost, because the current game is over. And we're walking around looking for the next round of tennis when our soul story has booked us in an entirely higher game that we can't see right now. So how do we discover the next game when all we can see is the same old damn tennis court? Well, that's what I mean by taking it higher. In the consciousness of Aries or our ego, higher is always seen as brighter, as up and down, as superlatives, basically. But with spiritual dimensions, when God says higher, she means more love. The higher you are in heaven means the more love you are interacting with as a soul. So the tennis game you are stuck in is based on a certain level of loving yourself. 
You may think that you're stuck in this game because of your performance or based on the game itself or because of your body or because the crowd loves you or the crowd doesn't love you. But the truth is everything in this current tennis game has been based on the level of how much love you love yourself or not. That is what determines spiritual levels, self-love. And I would argue that no matter what you have been doing in your own personal soul tennis game in the last few years, no matter what you changed, no matter what you worked really hard on, I'll bet you, you never loved yourself more. Because if you did, I don't think you'd be playing that tennis game. So, between now and May 11th, while Mercury and Uranus are doing this dance, I suggest you take your game higher. Every time that old tennis ball is served to you, knock that biatch out of the tennis court. And you might be asking, well, well, how do we do that? Well, basically, every time life serves you the same old game, love yourself higher. That means between now and May 11th, Every time you're about to respond, react, or begin anything, ask yourself, how can I be more loving to myself in this situation? What is the most loving thing I can do here? For myself, not for others. This is an Aries transit. This is not Libra. I believe that the magical door out of your tennis game will come from a moment of loving yourself on a higher plane. You will see the magic carpet arrive at one of those moments. And I suggest, as I do to all my clients, that you should practice on the most mundane things in life, okay? This is kind of wax on, wax off, sensei propaganda. So be more loving in your thoughts. Try it. Be more loving in your priorities. Do the most loving thing first and the least loving thing last. Be more loving in the foods you eat. Be more loving with the sleep you give yourself. In every situation, you should at least identify the most loving response you could give yourself, whether you're capable of it or not. And if you are capable, if you are brave enough, I suggest you do it. Because I believe taking action on that higher self-love is likely the magic carpet. I believe if you take your self-love higher for the next 16 days, you will see, quote, quote, out of your existing tennis game. You will find the path. You will find the new you. You will find the break in your own reality. And you will see why you have been stuck in the same game for so long. And if you don't want to be more loving to yourself for the next 16 days, well, that's fine. Sensei says, enjoy Wimbledon because this man is going to be in the stands this year watching. I am not playing this tennis game again this season. All right, my friend. I hope you have a wonderful and rainbow fun day. I will see you in 24 hours with more. And until then, remember, I love you and live, love, be.